Hello, adventuresses. Woo. Hello, We're here. Hi. <laughs> We're here. Uh, today is a really fun topic, how to not chafe. And this is a this is a, a really fun one, especially like I did the Mongol Derby in 2014, and one of the girls got shredded due to chafing. And if you Google like Mongol Derby chafing, like her butt is famous. <laughs> There's a photo and uh, it looks it looks really bad. Um, but I actually, she came with me to Bhutan and, and I asked her like, how did that happen? Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about how to not chafe because this is something that no one wants, but it does happen to a lot a lot of us. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before I dive in too much, if you guys are joining me live, just you know, comment down below where where in the world you're watching from. And yeah, thank you, Heather and, and Uta, for for joining me today. Well, thanks for having us again. It's so fun to do these. I, I just love that, you know, you're in Colorado, I'm in Canada, Uta's in India, we're really covering off the globe um, and, uh, you know, sharing great advice, stories, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, so yeah, if you're joining live, let us know where where in the world you are watching from. So let's, let's get down to business, guys. How to mm -hmm. not chafe. Um, first of all, let's have you guys chafe before. Um, where and how and why. <laughs> you you want to go first, Uta? Yeah, I can. Uh, mostly because of new riding breeches, new boots and stuff. Um, usually, you know, sometimes you buy something and it doesn't really fit. I mean, you think it fits when you buy it from the shop, but when you use it, you realize mm, it's not a good fit. Or you, you buy leather boots and uh, they just need a couple of days or a couple of rides to kind of soften up and adjust to your to your feet and uh yeah i have uh you know done a bit of, of of chafing there but fortunately i'm i'm pretty good i'm pretty much used to different saddles and different tag now so i i'm not really too bad but um my personal thing is i always try to wear um you know natural fiber and i always try not to wear new stuff on on long rides so that is basically why what helps me a lot well, I I have a, a chafing story that um, now the girl in the in that did the Mongol Derby, I'm sure her hers was like butt famous. Um, <laughs> there was no one going to take pictures of mine because I was just mortified and it hurt so much. I was at like a little fun day show, um, and it was really hot. And it I where I rubbed was kind of like right where your legs join your body, kind of in that soft skin area. And, you know, as the day progressed, you know, it was hot, had jeans on in a Western saddle, you know, and I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I felt sticky and that kind of stuff. Well, I got home and was like, oh, my goodness, my bottom is very, very tender. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll just get in the bathtub and see if that helps. And, you know, it was like cold water, hot water, nothing seemed to to take away the, the tingling. And I'd actually... Um, there was a couple of spots that I'd actually rubbed the skin a little bit raw just from, you know, the jeans and underwear. And in the end, um, some baby powder, some, you know, laying on my bed with no pants on, <laughs> letting air to it, um, that did, did heal it up. But boy, that, uh, you know, that, that's, that skin down there is very sensitive and, and it's not meant to be abused. So <laughs> So uh, going forward, you know, I, I made sure that, you know, maybe take some extra precautions in, in, the, in those delicate areas. What, what about you, Crystal? What, what's your chafing horror story? Um, so I have never chafed. My chafing horror story is that girl in Mongolia. Um, so when I met her in Bhutan and I asked her, like, why? Like, how? I don't really, if you Google it, it looks horrible. Mm -hmm. And like her body was shredded and basically what she told me was that her breeches has got had gotten wet mm -hmm. and so when she was riding the, the saddles that we used in this mongol derby event they're not like leather what are they they're like this weird synthetic like nylon or it was something mm -hmm. strange so my going into the derby like i i'm a show jumper so for me i was like i'm just gonna be in jumping seat the whole time like galloping these horses so you know for me i was kind of like my bumps not even on the saddle but yeah, she said that her breeches got wet and they just wouldn't dry. Like every evening, you know, it's Mongolia, it's cold at night or whatever. Like they just wouldn't dry. 
And she said, so she was putting on like wet breeches every day and they wouldn't dry. And then just the combination between that horrible nylon saddle and that's what did it. And so for me, it was, well, interesting to hear that because later on when my husband started learning to ride and at some point he's probably gonna like shut off the internet and say, Crystal, stop telling short <laughs> stories about me. But I bought him a pair of like full seat breeches for whatever reason. And he was learning to ride canter and he was, you know, we had just bought our mare Lily and Lily was still green, but her canter was really lovely. And so Christian was learning to ride on Lily, but he was terrified of cantering. And, you know, the coach that I am, he's still my husband and like, I couldn't <laughs> convince him to canter on Lily. So I, I actually signed him up for a couple of lessons with just like the local club, whatever instructor. I was like, you know, whatever she does, it doesn't matter. I just need him to experience canter. And they used a suede polo saddle and then the combination of these full seat breeches and him not knowing how to canter, like how to move his seat with in the rhythm with the horse and the suede polo saddle, it did it. And he, he chafed a bit. So he was definitely sore. So that didn't help me with my convincing my husband to learn how to canter <laughs> like thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely going to say that one, like a, a big thing is what type of, breeches or what type of saddle you're riding in. That's number one. And then number two is, well, first of all, don't, don't get wet. Let it, let your breeches dry. So in the Derby, I had uh, breeches that I knew were quick dry. So I didn't have that problem. Um, and, and bring a second pair. So you always mm -hmm. can rotate into a dry pair. Yeah. That's definitely a big one. And then the third thing I would say is learn how to ride, <laughs> learn how to ride no matter what the saddle is um, and, and not move against like that's the rubbing. I have to figure out where you guys can see my hands, but like when it rubs, <laughs> that's obviously how you're chafing. So if yeah. you're moving with your horse, I mean, the theory is that you shouldn't chafe. So hopefully, right. hopefully that makes sense to some of you guys, but yeah. I, I do think that the the wetness or the you know when you're if you're sweating um, and then kind of sit you know sitting and and jeans um, probably are the worst because they take forever to dry. Um, one thing that uh, I do know a couple gals do is they'll um, they'll put some deodorant on actually on the ins like use that you know the glidey kind of deodorant on the inside of their of their you know upper thighs up where it joins your body and that tends to help some of that friction between skin uh sweat um and material so so you know that that's a that's a tip uh another one is is wearing more of a a boxer stuff like a or a, a boy short or a boxer style underwear um, that, you know, that there is something, but you know, their skin and then two kind of things in material. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a, uh, thong underwear wearer, but I do know some women prefer that because they find that they're, you know, they don't get the right. I don't believe that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have any experience with that, but uh, I can't imagine people would prefer that. Or I just say, I, I definitely no don't. don't. <laughs> like, or no um, I, 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 I can't wear any of these boxer style underwear. I get crazy. It, it drives me seriously. It drives me mad. I once bought uh, that shape and I couldn't wear them. You know, I tried them out one day and after like one hour or two hours, I had to change it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really bad with those. But um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pretty right. It's also, um, of course, don't give that. Uh, that's definitely something. It's what you're used to, right? If you're used to riding a lot in different equipment and different saddles, I have had um, a lot of English riders having problems with Western saddles and a lot of Western riders having problems with English saddles because they're not used to the stirrup leathers or they're not used to the fenders. So then they, they can't relax or sit properly in the saddle. So it's always good to equip yourself. Like if you're going for like a long ride, um, see what kind of tack they use. And if they use like the opposite of what you're used to, like if you go to Scotland, we just... Um, we're discussing Scotland the other day. So, um, and you know, there's an English saddle and you usually ride in a Western one. It's a good idea maybe to do a couple of practice rides in an English saddle. So you're just getting used to it. Um, the feel of the stirrup leathers and uh, just see what kind of equipment goes for you because jeans and English saddle, uh, that is a killer. Um, so mm -hmm. better go for breeches in that case. Right. Definitely. And I, and I, maybe this is the coach in me, but like, I'm gonna still stress 
learn how to ride. <laughs> learn how yeah. to ride because honestly, when you know how to ride, the saddle doesn't matter so much. Like I, I worked in Oklahoma for a couple of years. A lot of people don't know this. I worked with re reining horses and roping horses and cutting horses and like all this stuff. But I had been English my entire life. Um, but I kind of, because I know how to ride and, and your position like doesn't change. Okay. The, the movement of the horse doesn't change. So the Western saddles are big and bulky. And personally, I'm an English rider. Like I don't like Western saddles. Um, but like riding is riding is riding. And it was kind of the same when I went to Brazil, um, Christian and I, we both rode with uh, one of our you know members. She has endurance horses. And so we signed up for this like 750 kilometer thing. And I had never in my life sat on a, a sheepskin and on their little gaucho saddles, mm -hmm. but it was okay. You know, I didn't have any rubs or whatever, even though it was like really weird. It was like riding on a camel or something. It was like you're oh. five feet off of the horse. And <laughs> it's just like, it's just a weird feeling. Like I'm looking at the horse, but I'm not really on the horse. It's, it's very strange. Um, so yeah, I, I was definitely, and then there's this weird strap there on those gaucho saddles, which I was sure I was gonna rub on that. So I decided do as the locals do. And the locals are not riding in those saddles in thin little breeches, they're riding in like gaucho pants, which are kind of like jeans, but softer. So that's what I did. I went and I bought some gaucho pants. They're called bambashas, like do as the locals do. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. what I did and I, and I was fine and I didn't have any rubs or thing like that weird little strap, which to me looks like it's chafing waiting to happen. Um, so yeah, definitely do as the locals do, definitely. <laughs> I, I do think, though, if you do, if it happens um, where you get, you know, some rub marks, it, it like you said, Uta, about, you know, the English stirrup leathers, that that is something that, you know, if you always ride Western and then you ride in an English saddle, you may get some rubs on your on your legs. Um, baby powder is is a fantastic, uh, you know, easy to carry with you, put it on it. There's, there must be some ingredient that takes a little bit of that sting away, but then helps kind of absorb some of that uh, pre blister moisture kind of thing of it. Um, there's lots of like, uh, I think they always advertise like gold bond for men that if they get, you know, chafing from just walking, you know, they're if their legs are rubbing together, those kind of things. Um, there, I did a little bit of research, and you can actually buy. Um, it's called um, Glide On, and it is an actual like uh, uh, non-chafing lubricant that you can put on your legs to, to prevent it. Um, you know, for yes. myself, um, do you, you know, a little bit of deodorant that seems to help with the with the sweat. Um, but you know, Kristen, you make a good point. If you're sitting in the saddle properly, you shouldn't be rubbing. Now, granted, if it's you know extremely hot or you're ill-fitting clothing, uh, you know sometimes there's just going to be situations where things happen. Um, but knowing that after it happens, you know maybe uh, a little bit of ozonol or um, uh, polysporin, those kind of things will help ease some of the pain. Oh, Tylenol, Advil those kind of things as well. But. So you guys were just talking about Scotland and we have uh, Anne joining us from Scotland. So hi, Anne. Okay. Hi, Anne. <laughs> hi. We have a podcast coming up on, on Scotland. It's one of my favorite places to go visit. So um, uh, we're, we're, Ut and I both are, you know, we, we take one off of our bucket list and we add a couple more, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never strays. Always. <laughs> But, I know uh, our... coming back on this on this body uh, stuff on this body glide. Actually, this is quite cool. I used to have that for my horses, but you can actually use it for both rider and horse. Um, it's it's pretty cool stuff. I had it. Um, I used to have a mare which was extremely sensitive, so I used to put it under uh, you know where I would put the the breast plate and sometimes on her head also because she would chaff a lot. And this really, this stuff really helped her a lot in not you know getting herself uh, rubbed raw. And I know a lot of our members, because we've had this topic come up a few times in our Facebook group, um, some of them have suggested Vaisley. So oh. I guess because it's slippy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, I guess anything that, that, that makes it slippy, right. it, you know, a, a lubricant of some sort to help um, so you don't get that um, skin on material friction kind of thing because that's what and you know and it's unfortunate that um you know the inside part of your legs 
um, you know, really, uh, you know, close to your to, to the lady parts, um, that's pretty thin skin and it is delicate and it's not meant to be like aggressively rubbed there. So, so it, you know, it, it makes sense that it would be a, a, an easy area to, um, to, to chafe. Um, I'd be really curious of what our, our listeners, what they use, um, you know, if they're using the, the glide on or if they're uh, using deodorant or fancy underwear or, or they're just, oh, it's too hot today. I'm not riding. That, that would be me. Oh, <laughs> looks a little bit hot out there. I don't want to sweat today. So. Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the chat if you guys, I know we covered a whole lot of stuff here, but if you have any other tips and things, just let us know in the chat. Um, the final thing that I would say as well is make sure your stirrups and everything like are the correct length. And, you know, sometimes when we, we start a ride, we feel like, oh, it's comfortable. But then five hours later, you're like, uh, I've been riding with my stirrups a whole too short or too long or whatever. So, you know, make sure that you're riding. I know in, when my husband and I were riding across Ireland, I mean, I'm a show jumper. I usually have shorter stirrups. But for Ireland, we dropped our stirrups really long, um, mm -hmm. like dressage length, I would say. And it was because when you're riding six hours, you know, it's like it's just so much more comfortable. Um, for right. us and, and and horses probably well. riding, you know, when you're riding at a slower pace, those kind of things, it is more, you know, you're out there more for a leisurely ride. You know, you're not trying to, you know, you're not galloping miles and, and those kind of things. So at, at a walk, you do tend to uh, be better. Oh, let's see here. Carrie says, I oft, I use a product called Monkey Butt, mostly after one is chafed. I haven't used it so much when riding, but after hiking. Oh, that's that's a great tip. Um, monkey butt. We'll and Anne's to... solution is to carriage drive. <laughs> oh, Uta, there you go. You, you and you and Anne can go to Scotland and go carriage driving because that's uh, Uta's. Just, she's you have that clinic come or that uh, course that you're going to take. So yes, exactly. Let, let's see if I like it. You know, I, I'll probably not go into uh, you know toss the horse riding thing out of the window because I like the horse riding too much and I love speed. So I don't think carriage driving is a lot about speed, but I'm really looking forward to learn it properly. And um, yeah, let's see. I might go for a pony or, you know, drive, you know, break one of my horses for carriage driving and buy a little sulky or something that would be fun. Right. Um, one other thing that we, we did, we've talked about before riding bras and those kind of things. Um, but some, you know, it, it, depending on how hot it is too, um, you know, putting a little deodorant in your bra will also help if there's any rubbing on the sides or those kind of things and help absorb some of that. You don't get the, the sweaty boobs. So. Perfect. Well, this was, um, I think, a lot of information we covered today. So I think this yeah. was really good. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let us know. Let us know in the chat or drop us an email or whatever. Like, we like to hear from you guys what topics you need. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. And thank you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. You can mm -hmm. find it on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify and on our website. And um, let's see. We have one more comment from Anne here try horse driving obstacles or scurry driving oh. if you like speed she's saying so apparently it can be fast ah okay i'll definitely try <laughs> yeah um, i definitely let me learn it first and then i'll go into speed driving <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i mean that's what they used to do in war the romans the yeah. little cherry so i guess it's possible <laughs> that's right so yeah well, cool. well thank you guys for for joining us live as well it's a lot more fun when when you guys let us let us know Yes, and hopefully exactly. everyone has a, a chafe-free summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Well, thank you guys so much exactly. for joining us. Bye. And we will see you guys next Bye. time. Bye.